We have another special guest with us. We have Donald Trump Jr., the executive vice president of the Trump Organization and son of President Donald Trump. Thanks for being with us. Good to be with you guys. So when you when the president goes to the White House, do you get a do you get a, do you get a promotion? Are you still executive <laughs> yeah. vice president? I, yeah, I don't know. I should probably president? upgrade myself. Yeah. Now, right? I should give myself it, a really big raise. Too, but you can't even guess. ask him if you can get a raise. No, I can't. I just got to do it. Right. Right. Eric and I can agree to each other's raises. So I think it'll work out. <laughs> I well. remember interviewing your mom, and she said. My kids always said, Mom, I want to get paid more money. I want to get paid more money because it was at the golf course. Uh -huh. She said, finally, you sat her down one day and you said, Mom, I would like a raise. And she said, OK. And you said, I've been complaining about the amount you're paying me all these years. Why are you giving me a raise now? And she said, because you asked. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I got that one from my father as well. Learn the hard way sometimes. And uh, <laughs> right. you, you have to go out there and get it yourself. We asked for the IG report. Look how I can become the serious one here all of a sudden. Uh, we asked for the IG report. It's coming out today. Uh, we have talked about all morning long what we're expecting. It's going to be an indictment. Not an actual one, but a metaphysical one of the Clinton email scandal. Yes. What are you expecting? You know, listen, I, I, I sort of look at what I've seen from the outside bureaucracy. I sort of look at them as HR for a big corporation. I mean, they're not there for the little guy. They're there to protect the big corporation. So I imagine it will be one of those things that both sides will look at and be like, see, I told you so. Uh, so, you know, I'm hoping it's good because what's going on is a disgrace. Uh, when you see the things that we've seen in our government, if, if you saw those things happening in, you know, banana republics, you'd say that's terrible. But when they're happening actually here in this country, and you notice all the people that were really loud a few weeks ago, sort of went away. They're kind of quiet all of a sudden uh, because I think they realize that people are onto them. They know what's been going on and what happened has been really disgusting. What's going to be hard to do is to marginalize it as a political document. When he was appointed Michael Horowitz by President Bush and reaffirmed by President Obama, right. it looks like politics could be out of this and a year investigation could be into this. So when they come to their conclusion and present their case, uh, Comey, McCabe, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, and maybe Bruce Orr, according to some of these unredacted uh, things that have been released now, uh, could have their credibility questioned. How does that, what does that mean in the big picture? Well, listen, I, I think if you want to question their credibility, they've done enough of that on their own. I mean, just look at the, the double talk, all the things that they've said, all the things they've lied about. I mean, it, it's right out there. I mean, these are you know, public statements that they've made. So, you know, I think their credibility is shot. And it's a shame to see that happen to some of these great institutions like the FBI, where the guys on the ground, the boots, you know, the guys actually doing the real work, mm -hmm. Are incredible people. They're hardworking, loyal, patriotic Americans. It's the problem is the lawyers at the top, the guys that have never carried a gun, that are just you know pure right. bureaucrats. Uh, they've really put a blight. Uh, you know, on those institutions, and it's a shame. And hopefully, we can get yeah. them some credibility there's back eventually. There's an old saying: it all comes out in the wash. And hopefully, we'll find some answers. If there was mishandling of information in this investigation, mm -hmm. thanks to the executives in the uh, Obama administration, hopefully, it'll all come to light. And yeah, I don't I'd, I'd like to see it, without... but as you can imagine, I've become a cynic after what I've seen over the I last know, couple of years. The Robert Mueller investigation. Robert Mueller's approval is now at 34 percent. Uh, Rudy Giuliani on with Laura Ingram last night yeah. said, "We're going to decide in the next couple of weeks whether the president sits." down. If uh, the, your dad asks you what he should do, what would you tell him? Listen, I don't trust these people as far as I could throw them. I wouldn't sit down with them because, you know, you could sit there and ask questions for 50 hours, for 100 hours, ask the same thing a thousand times and then say, oh, the comma's different here. Now we got you. You know, the reality is the greatest investigative bodies in the world have been looking at this for two years. Two years. And they've come up with nothing. By the way, the only thing they've come up is what they themselves uh, we're doing to try to set this up. So, you know, I wouldn't do it. I think it'd be stupid. I don't think any, le you know, any proper lawyer would say, hey, you should go do it because it's not about collusion anymore. It's can we get him to say something that may be interpreted as somewhat off or inaccurate and after 50,000 questions, maybe you make a mistake and that's how we get you. So, and that's ridiculous. And that's not what this is all about. I mean, we're not even talking about Russian collusion with that one anymore because they've given up on that. It's the constant attempt to try to find something to undermine this president this duly elected president and again for me as an American and when I'm around you know other parts of the country I mean people are coming up to me being like what's going on is disgusting Let's right. talk, let's you talk also about. had that experience with yourself directly. Oh, I, I right? did, by the way. How many yeah. hours have you testified in front of Congress? About 25 hours in mm. front of various congressional bodies, you know, millions in legal fees and all this stuff. The difference is I can weather that storm. Most of these other people on here can't. They're younger people. They're working on a campaign. So they beat them down. They put them in these situations where they're in. And it's, it's just not really fair. It's really It costs them a lot sick. of money, don't they? It, it does. What's nice about it is the mess that I went through was probably the little, say, the needle in the haystack that created the precipice for all this other discovery that we found out, hey, 
look at what they're doing. Right. Like it's really it's the other side. It's the Democrats funding these things. It's the Hillary Clinton campaign spending millions of dollars to foreign agents to come up with this nonsense dossier that's still totally unverified. And yet, if you look at some of the other networks, they run around like this thing's the, you know, the Magna Carta. It's, Let, it's let's get to the big issue of this week prior yes. to today, and of course, that's the North Korea summit. When you saw your dad shaking the hand of Kim Jong Un, there's a picture of it right there for those of you who weren't around this week. What's going through your mind when you see that? Listen, it, it's incredible. And, you know, I, I know the guy. I understand how he works. I, even when they sort of pulled out of the summit, I told a couple people, I was like, this is exactly what's going to happen. He's going to play hardball. They're going to come back to the table, and they're going to get this thing done. That's what it is. I mean, he understands how to do these things. And that's why it's so interesting when I watch these government pundits. Oh, my, I've been dealing with this issue for 30 years. Hey, for 30 years, you couldn't get in a room with the guy. You couldn't even have a meeting. I'm not saying he's a nice guy. I'm not saying this, but you have to have this dialogue. I mean, I see the other side. They're almost upset that we're not at nuclear war with North Korea right but now right. because upset. it means that Trump was actually effective. But guess what? What they've been doing for 60 years since the end of that war, which never really ended, but for 60 years, totally ineffective. So someone comes in, takes a different approach, tries to do something else, actually brings a business mentality to this thing. And guess what? You have more progress in 16 months than they had in 60 years, right. and yet they continue to knock it. So what he did this week was incredible. And it's textbook Trump. I mean, he knows how to get people on his side. He knows how to breach those gaps. And the gaps are very substantial. But he knows how to do that because he's done it for his entire career. Well, the left and mainstream media, they had a heyday with that. They wanted to turn it negative, of even course. though, but you can't have it both ways. If you, if you say no war, and then your dad is going over there and taking away nuclear weapons from yeah. this dictator, right. and they're complaining, I, I really don't understand it. We had Cory, Cory Booker was, was talking about how, uh, basically, if you aren't deeply disturbed by your father and your father's era, then you need to check your own love. Listen to this, and we'll get your reaction. I'm telling you right now, if this country hasn't broken your heart, you don't love her enough. If you're not deeply disturbed by what's coming, you've got to check your own love. Some people call it patriotism. That's a fine word. But understand, patriotism is love of country. And you cannot love your country unless you love your fellow country men and women. Love is struggle. And we know what a great leader Frederick Douglass says, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. And so let me tell you to all the faithful here, I'm a big believer. Before you tell me about your religion, first show it to me in how you treat other people. Very charismatic, but does not like your father. He said at the beginning of that, and I'm not really sure what this means. I'm telling you right now, if this country hasn't broken your heart, you don't love her enough. Yeah, listen, it, it's ridiculous. And I think we're used to seeing Cory Booker and the histrionics and everything is drama. And yet, you know, two weeks ago, we put forth prison reform legislation that he's been fighting for for you know, since the beginning of his career and all of a sudden he's against it because anything that Trump does he'll be against it so something that he's champion that he's done all of a sudden he's not for it and he realizes I think that's a mistake but that's the problem with the other side you know if Donald Trump walked across the Hudson River to New Jersey they'd say Trump can't swim if he came out for oxygen they'd, they'd be against it Okay, they'd right. hold their breath. So you're just almost. So you know, it's just honestly, it's just noise. He looks like he's auditioning to be a televangelist, and you know, we get that. We've seen the over drama. We've seen the facial expressions in the hearings. You know, I, I don't think it plays well with real people in this country. I mean, I, I get he thinks it probably does, but I think he's a terrible actor. The Democrats are trying to get a, a message across and try to find what the right one is because it's been ineffective so far. Uh, and, you've, and it seems like the president's numbers are going up. Uh, and they're they are, but, higher you, than President Obama's. So if you're far. a Democrat, what, what matrix are you running on? Are you running on jobs? Are you running on the economy? Are you, I literally cannot think of a single matrix by which their policies right. have proven to be successful and Trump's haven't because he's winning. That's what he's doing. Right. I just want you to hear what Bob Corker said yesterday, who uh, was up for Secretary of State, up for a running mate, at times been a critic of the president. Here he is calling out what he told me was leadership yesterday in saying this. We're in a strange place. I mean, it's almost, uh, uh, you know, been a, it's becoming a cultish thing, isn't it? It's not a good place for any party to, to end up with a cult-like situation as it relates to, uh, to, to a president that uh, happens to be of, purportedly of the, of the same party. So he says because no one wants to buck, because leadership doesn't want to buck the president, 
a, they're a cult. Listen, I, I think that's ridiculous. I think, you know what, if it's a cult, it's because they like what my father's doing. You see real Americans actually winning for a change, conservatives actually getting things done. And I mean, I saw this. I mean, I saw this during DACA when Schumer folded initially. I had multiple congressmen call me, Don, what just happened? I go, what do you mean? Go, what just happened, Don? I go, well, we won. And I quote, we don't win. We give up because the other side calls us a name. They do this. So I think Americans, and I addressed this yesterday on my Twitter to Corker, you know, Americans want to see someone who's actually going to have conviction, not just talk right. about it, you know, with great sound bites. And then when it comes game time, they sit there and fold. They want someone who's going to be like my father and fight and actually want to win. And how about actually want to win elections? How do you feel about the Adam Schiff saying the other day that if he gets the majority in the House, they're going to investigate Jared and Ivanka? Yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous. But, you know, again, a Adam Schiff, he's never met a TV camera he didn't right. love. So he'll be out there, he'll say all these things, it all ends up being nonsense. 99% chance he's the guy leaking all these things. Like I dealt with him in my testimony, and you know, every time he went to a bathroom break, uh, you know, I get to read about it on CNN seven hours later when we were out of there. So, you know, it, it, that's what it is. The other side, they're, they have a platform of hate and nonsense and nothing else. And I think they're panicking because of it. Don, your dad's birthday is today, 72. It is. What's your message for him? Well, <laughs> hopefully he's watching. I imagine he is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, happy birthday, Dad. I, I love you very much. Uh, you're getting absolutely no presents because I figured five grandchildren is enough. And when you get the guy, <laughs> good. when you get the most powerful guy in the world, is, yeah. you know, <laughs> anything's going to be a letdown. So uh, right. we, we love you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon because I don't get to see him that uh, much anymore. That's the only problem. Happy. Buy him one of his ties for a I, I will do day. that. Yeah, he, he doesn't have enough of those. Thank Thank you, Thanks so much.